decided to come to McKinney, and the reason that I've seen 32, a history that people don't know, it's, it's strange to me because I, I said to the Lord, if there was one property that I ever wanted to own in America, it's only McKinney. And then I went back to Florida. And then I got invited to come to McKinney, and the reason that I'm, I'm kind of drawn to McKinney is that in 1932, a little lady was walking down the street of McKinney, Texas, and Jesus appeared in the sky and said, you will have a son. He will usher in the second coming. You will call his name John. She ran from the street, got into her house. Her mother's in the house, and she's so scared. Um, I'm not even sure if she told her mother, but the boy was born, and she named him Kenneth Hagen. Not obey the vision and named him a different name, but the Lord said he would help usher in the second coming. So I attended that school and was uh, ordained through Kenneth Hagen. And you could, you know, in, with prophecy, we add our own stuff, we add our own emotions, we add our own interpretation. You, you just can't do that. So if God said, your son will help usher in the second coming, you could say, he, he's going to live until Jesus comes. And some people thought that, and obviously that didn't happen. If you look in the Bible, if, if the Bible says, Elijah will usher in the Messiah's coming. That's all it says. Now, if you misinterpret that and you add to it and say, that means... Uh, John, who's, who came in the spirit of Elijah, cannot die. He just cannot die. That's my interpretation. You would be wrong. And you would not know what the right interpretation was until the events unfolded. And John was indeed beheaded. He was killed. Did he fulfill the prophecy? Was he the one? He, he is. Jesus says, if you will receive it, uh, John came in the spirit of Elijah. And yet he died. And things were not fulfilled yet. And people who lived at that time did not fully understand who Jesus was, what he came to do. It takes a lot more time to fulfill prophecy than most people think. So I'm here to tell you, and I'm, I'm right here in the middle of the eclipse. I'm very excited about it because I preached on this for 10 years. I, I have to say I must be one of the first because back then all you get would be nasty comments and mocking and no pastor would accept it. You know, you would get Christians who are crazy about prophecy saying, you know, I'm following you, I see it in the Bible, but you wouldn't get any pastor um, agreeing with it. And now today, I am just one of many, many, many people. I'm nobody. Because there are so many people live streaming the eclipse. They all believe there's some kind of significance to it. But I would say right now, they all misinterpret it. So that's okay, because everybody at least is looking at the same thing. But I'm here to tell you, uh, because I've been watching this for a long time, I've been studying for a long time, the second coming is not happening today. The rapture is not happening today, it's not happening this year. Now that's a disappointment for a lot of people, because they think, well, the world's crazy, and, and it's, um, it's so hard to go through what we're going through, um, especially in the States, it's so different. New Centrum Menopause Supplements help